One way to mitigate the effects of global emissions is the development of decarbonization pathways. In other words, the reduction of carbon in the atmosphere. This is becoming a high priority not only for governments, but also for businesses and communities alike. Because carbon is so central to plant and animal life as well as the global economy, strategies for decarbonizing must be balanced and prudent. What is the future of energy if we move toward decarbonization? Well, full decarbonization would require an entirely different energy and infrastructure system, relying on alternative energy sources and supply chains. The Alliance for Innovation and Infrastructure has surveyed the top paths to decarbonization, offering expert insight from energy resources and technology to supporting and facilitating assets, which can be found at AII.org slash policy briefs. To better understand decarbonization, Let's begin by defining it. Decarbonization refers to reducing the amount of carbon dioxide and similar gases like methane that enter the atmosphere, or lowering the carbon intensity of our energy production, transportation, and economic sectors. Industry and policymakers agree, there is no silver bullet solution. There is no one strategy or technology that can accomplish decarbonization alone. Moreover, comprehensive analysis is required to drive practical solutions. Ambitious goals, like pledging to achieve net zero emissions by 2050, cannot be done without the guarantee of stable and affordable energy supplies, universal energy access, and robust economic growth as per the International Energy Agency. Moreover, existing solutions must be balanced with yet-to-be-proven solutions. In the United States, the conversation surrounding decarbonization generally centers around the same handful of options. In large part, the policy approaches include tax, subsidy, grants, or favorable regulatory emphasis. The technological and industrial tools for decarbonization often include wind and solar as the popular energy generators, batteries as the backup and facilitating asset, electric vehicles for transportation, and electrification of the entire economy as the end goal. Hidden within these popular paths to decarbonization are certain assumptions, social and economic costs, and varying degrees of political, economic, and logistical feasibility. To simplify decarbonization further, AII groups strategies into three basic categories – energy, supporting infrastructure, and carbon limiting or removal tools. Let's begin with energy. In the short term, decarbonization proponents seek to meet new demand with a carbon-free source so that the marginal growth in the economy does not add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. That might look like building new wind and solar farms, but not necessarily shutting down coal plants quite yet allowing the economy to grow with more energy, but lower total emissions. In the long term, decarbonization means replacing existing emitting energy sources with renewables to produce the same level of energy, but at a lower carbon intensity. This means that for a net zero future, the economy would be powered by non-emitting sources or employ a mitigation or offset strategy equal to its emissions. In that future, there would be no coal plants. For both short- and long-term energy solutions, the top decarbonization strategies being discussed are hydrogen, nuclear, solar, and wind. Each has its own pros and cons. Hydrogen has to be produced and is not naturally occurring. That will require a lot of energy to produce the gas along with new infrastructure like pipelines and storage tanks. Although, options like methane pyrolysis may provide a way to generate hydrogen at its point of use and avoid both carbon emissions and costly infrastructure buildouts. No matter how it's made, hydrogen burns without carbon dioxide, making it favorable for industrial heat and electricity. Nuclear tends to be prohibitively expensive to build, but offers carbon-free electricity continuously and at scale. It can be expensive in part because of public policy, including regulatory compliance, permitting, insurance, and more. Lastly, many worry about nuclear waste and the lack of a centralized national disposal site. But nuclear waste can be safely stored on-site as it is today. And overall, nuclear is the cleanest form of power and the second safest method of producing energy. Solar and wind have similar upsides and downsides. These are both technological solutions to energy production rather than commodities like oil and gas. This means the costs are likely to fall over time as technology improves. They also generate electricity without emitting carbon and are among the cleanest and safest forms of power generation. On the downside, each produces electricity intermittently and rely on supply chains and mining activity. Both solar and wind are often found far away from the energy users, requiring new transmission infrastructure to connect them to the grid. 
Lastly, each option generates waste that is difficult to dispose of. Something everyone agrees on is that every pathway to decarbonization runs through energy. The next set of strategies are complements to energy, such as batteries able to hold power generated from renewable or carbon-free sources to make them more efficient or viable at scale. Still, others seek to capture or reverse the emissions entering the atmosphere, either at the source or in general. How do you expect to see decarbonization play out on a global scale?